Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, folks. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray. We are virtual still. We're not back in our normal spot inside Renaissance Bank on Windward Parkway in Alpharetta, but we're looking forward to being back there sometime soon. In the meantime, if you are, well, pretty fed up, let's say, with your uh, mega bank experience or uh, any other bank you're, you're having a trouble with that you're not getting personal service for your business or your or your family, uh, give Renaissance Bank a try. RenaissanceBank.com is the website. You can find their nearest office, some 200 around the South, ready to serve you. And they um, actually, when you find that office and call them, they answer the phone, which is really nice. Um, and I'm talking about a real person and uh, they'll be happy to have you in the branch. Um, you got to make an appointment ahead of time uh, because of COVID-19 uh, restrictions, but uh, they're happy to see you and uh, help you out. So uh, I know them personally. They do great work uh, for the clients that I have, and uh, uh, they're worth giving a try. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. And now I want to welcome Jerry Savage, and Jerry is the president of Four Pillars Consulting. Jerry, welcome. John, it's great to be with you this morning. Great to have you here. So uh, talk a little bit about Four Pillars Consulting and how you're helping folks out there. Sure. Uh, the Four Pillars uh, Consulting Group was born out of um, the recently published book, Four Pillars of Sales. Uh, most people will start a consulting business and then feel they have to write a book. I, uh, I, pulled all of my experience of 30 years into, um, into uh, the book, The Four Pillars of Sales. Um, and then beyond that, said, okay, well, you know, I can help a lot of people with this. I've had a lot of great feedback on it. And um, I've actually done some sales consulting in the past where I've helped individual salespeople and companies. And so uh, The Four Pillars is just kind of, uh, even through COVID, has begun to grow. Mm. So yeah, we got, hopefully if we have time, we'll get back around to writing the book before you even start your company. That's a, that's an awesome feat right there. So congratulations on that. But, but let's talk a little bit about your background. I'm always interested in how folks, um, uh, made the journey that they made. I mean, why sales for you? Why, why did you, uh, go down that road in your career? Well, it's, it's interesting. I never wanted to be a salesman. My dad was a salesman. So I guess a little bit, uh, you know, he wanted me to be in sales. And I can remember running as a kid running around the neighborhood with one of those little boxes of, of things that you got from a company where they had coasters and things going door to door and, and, and all that. But then I got interested in aviation. I want to be a pilot. So I ended up I ended up going against the grain and joining the Marine Corps after I finished two years of college. And uh when uh, I finished my uh, my time in the Marine Corps, that's when I actually got into sales. And uh, so it's uh, it's interesting, the journey you take. I ended up from that point, uh, never looked back. I've been in it for over 30 years now. Um, was a uh, five-time President's Club Award winner with uh, Zimmer Orthopedics um, in the early 2000s, which is a very prestigious award for them, number 10 in the United States uh, back in 2001. And then I wanted to be a distributor and so uh, run my own company and run my own business. I did that and then uh, then got into the corporate side of the business. So I've been in sales and, and marketing, um, in the, mainly in the medical device arena for over 30 years. And you've got a uh, – you're, you're actually a teacher, so you, you're a professor. Yes. Yeah, so t tell us briefly about that. So I'm kind of a late bloomer. Um, as I said, I went two years of college. I got my pilot's license when I was 19, started flying planes when I was 16. And then, and then went in the Marine Corps, never, never finished my degree. And um, when I got into, when I had the opportunity to go into some management positions, I got kicked square in the face with, you don't have a bachelor's degree. 
I'm mm. like, well, well, I've run my own company and I've done all this in sales. And the HR said, well, I'm sorry, uh, you know, that's not good enough. And I said, well, if I do online, they said, well, no, it's got to be brick and mortar. So without quietly, without telling anybody while I was a uh, uh, VP of uh, sales for a trauma in a, in a medical company, I just quietly went back to school and got my bachelor's degree. And then, um, and then 18 months later, I got my, um, oh, 23 months later, got my MBA. And when I got that, that summer, um, you know, I knew some people at the university, Eastern University here in uh, Pennsylvania. I went and interviewed and uh, they said, well, we think you'd make a great instructor. So they started putting me in um, um, mainly healthcare for mar- marketing for healthcare classes, uh, um, uh, ethics, business ethics, um, things like that. Um, that and I've had a ball doing that over the last several years. Uh, it's hard to do when you're when you're uh, when you're doing other things and traveling around the country, but um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Want to go back to it uh, at some point. And and attention, all students. Uh, here's the professor to talk to if you really want to uh, be successful with your business. Uh, so, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, no, seriously, Jerry, you you um, since you were in sales, there you went through. I'm sure more sales programs and training than you can count uh, and remember. Um, yet you were motivated to write a book about sales. So what is it that's that you that's in your book and and let, let's just uh let people know that's um uh the four pillars of um of sales um is the title of the book or four pillars of yeah four pillars of sales. What was is it a, in that book that you felt you needed to uh tell the world and that you did not find in the earlier training you'd been through? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because I often reflect on that. You remember I said I wasn't supposed to be in sales. So um, when I was a, a young sales representative, uh, I, I went to the sales training at the companies and they would do at the end of the, the week, it's actually product training. So at the end of the week, they would do this uncomfortable role play. And they never talked about building relationships or even personality styles um, and things like that. And so, you know, I was essentially handed a catalog. And this was back before we had, you know, cell phones. We had pagers and things like that back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. And, Mm. um, you know, I I thought that there was a whole lot missing. Uh, Got involved with a couple of programs like, uh, for instance, Integrity Selling. It was the first one that I actually saw that actually introduced a type of personality profile, not scientific, but it was, it was good. And it showed people that, okay, you need to first understand who you're talking to um, and understand their style and understand your style, not to put one over on them, but to communicate effectively. And John, that was, that was missing on program after program after program. So I really wanted to do it for that one. That's one reason. And the other reason is because I had a lot of successes, a lot of failures, so more failures than successes. And I wanted to share that because a lot of books are canned approaches. They're, I don't mean that with any disrespect to any of them, mm-hmm. but you know, I lived it, and I wanted to, the first part of the book is belief in self and alignment with the alignment with the, the belief in yourself and your abilities and your product. Um, and that's where the that's where the four pillars of honesty, integrity, knowledge, and genuine interest spawn, spawn from. Before I even get into personality styles and relationships and and the process. So let's get into those four pillars, if you can talk. I mean, some of them are seem self-explanatory, like honesty, but just walk through um, why those four, the the explanation of the four and why those four are so important. I think they're important uh, in life in general and can be applied to a lot of different things. Uh, you're right. Honesty seems self-explanatory, but when you're in business and when you're in sales, I think, first of all, you got to be honest with yourself. And then you have to, as well as being honest with others, mm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, integrity, it's almost a cliche. It's doing the right thing when, when other people aren't looking. But, you know, I've seen people in my business that have a great amount of integrity and they don't go around and flaunt. And you just know that mm. that person's always going to do the right thing. And you want to, those are the folks you want to model yourself after. And then there's a an gentleman that I mentioned in the book, not by name, but that I, that, that I just think so much of that, that exemplifies that. Mm. Um, and, 
the other piece is, is knowledge, you know, um, knowledge of your product, knowledge of your competition, knowledge of the, you know, whatever industry you're in, you've got to stay relevant. And that's where the knowledge piece comes from. I feel bad for folks that have been in, in a certain industry for a long time. And I see them at meetings and they're looking for the next cup of coffee to talk about the old days. And, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't care how old you are, how long you've been in the business, as long as you stay relevant and you keep your knowledge base up, um, you're valuable. And mm-hmm. that's, and that's what I wanted to instill in people in the book. And then the last piece to that, John, is his genuine interest. You know, you gotta, you, you, you gotta like people. Mm. You have to, you have to be interested to speak to them. You know, I mean, you know, it, you've heard of the million times with people that have been on your show, I'm sure, um, from Covey's book, Seek First, Understand Before Being Understood. And that's, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's been in the seven habits for years. And, you know, people have repeated that and repeated that. But genuine interest in somebody allows you to make them feel comfortable and to build a relationship and to find common ground because without finding common ground, you're nowhere. And you can't do that unless you find a genuine interest in them and you actually listen to them. So that's where the four pillars came, comes from. And, and the book's in three parts. And that, that first part talks a lot about that. Folks, we're here with Jerry Savage and Jerry is president of four pillars consulting group. Um, Jerry, you, one of the things that strikes me and, and positively for you, but maybe not quite so positively for the sales instruction industry is that for years you went through a whole lot of sales programs, uh, classes, what have you, but you felt compelled to write a book that is involved about focusing on the other person. <laughs> I mean, that's what I just heard. <laughs> And, and that's a, that's, 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 is, I mean, am I overreacting to that or is that an um, indictment of the sales industry there? No, you're not. Um, several years ago, I was invited to speak to a, a sales class at um, one of the orthopedic companies and they had hired um, fairly young folks out of, out of school. They thought it was the best thing to do, hire engineers with MBAs. Um, and they were all in their, in their early twenties. And, and, they they were focused on and God bless them. They were focused on product and it was feature benefit, feature benefit, feature benefit. But before you can even get there, you have to understand what the need is. And now a lot of companies talk about need based selling and all that stuff. But and that's almost a cliche too. Need based selling. Well, I can't sell you anything, John, unless you do have a need for it. But I can't even get to that point unless you and I have a relationship and an understanding. And I can't even get to that point unless I understand a little bit about your personality style, not to put one over on you, but to understand how you would like to receive information. Mm. I may like to deliver it differently because, you know, in the book, I ta- I've, I've actually taken uh, I've labeled four different styles to make it easy for, for a salesperson to, to kind of grasp that quickly. So if I'm a real driven doer type person and you're a real analytical person and I just come in barreling in, you just you're just going to put the you're going to put the blinders up. You're going to put the the roadblock up right there. So you know I don't think young salespeople or you know generally I've I've even talked to uh, folks that have read the book that have been in the in the industry and in sales for years and they go wow what a refresher that is enlightening because sometimes we forget that we get caught up. Sure. Now uh, you mentioned personality assessments. It's a big part of the book dive into that a little bit deeper on how that happens and, and how you use that for effective sales. Sure. Um, so most of that, as many people will know, comes from Carl Jung um, back in the twenties and thirties who separated from Freud. And then, and then you had Myers breaks. And then, you know, since then, you know, uh, since much of that has become public domain, there's several companies out there that talk about personality styles. And some companies, even companies that I've been involved with, um, had their uh, whole entire sales team across the U.S. take a personality assessment. Very good. But then they fail to show somebody how to use it mm-hmm. <laughs> or how, why it's valuable. Mm-hmm. And so I, I took, um, you know, I took four personality styles. I called one, you know, the enthusiast, 
which is the person that, that um, is a little disheveled, likes his sports team or her sports team, you know, wants to talk about that more than business. And then the dom the dominator is somebody who's, you know, short and to the point. And then the analyst wants all the facts. And then, you know, the moderator is, I like you, you like me. I don't want to hurt your feelings. So let's just have a nice conversation. And I won't even tell you if I don't like your product because I don't want you to get upset. So those, so I put those in very easy terms so that anybody that read that or a salesperson could look at that and walk into an office and say, okay, this is kind of who I'm dealing with. And this is how they receive information. And I know who I am. So I know that I have to adapt my style. That's what's missing from a, from a lot of programs. And, um, and so what you want to do is the, the process that I built in the book, which is um, the second to the last part of the book, is how to do that naturally and how to do that in a way that it doesn't sound canned and you're just having a conversation. Mm. You know, some people like to call the first step in the sale the interview. Well, it's not an interview because interviews sometimes feel like an interrogation. So it's more like a discussion. And that's where you find out about their style and your style and how they want to receive information, which that big briefcase of all those studies and everything that you've got that you need to talk about is going to tell you just how to present them or not. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's that's how. It makes perfect sense to me. I'm just, again, I'm surprised that someone here in 2020 had – is just is getting around to writing that book and congratulations on you being that man uh, doing that as opposed to somebody didn't get to that this some time ago. But uh, uh, again, congratulations on that. One thing I want to shift gears toward is, is call reluctance because that's something you address in your work. Why is that an issue for people? I mean, there's, there's an obvious answer and a less obvious answer, right? Yeah, there is. And and I think everybody in sales, whether they admit it or not, are predisposed to a certain amount of call reluctance. Uh, I had a, um, a VP of sales for a capital equipment company in, uh, uh, who read the book and who's now walking through it with her uh, salespeople. And the first thing that she said, and I was surprised, you know, she said, wow, that, that, the chapter on call reluctance was, oh, my God, you know, and she's she going over that with her salespeople. Um, we build stories in our head, you know, we all, and I can build up any story I want why somebody's going to say no, and I'll believe it. Mm. Okay. So whether you believe whether, whether it's true or not, if you believe it, it's, it's true. Right. So, um, and that's what happens. So, um, people get beat up and they get, you know, um, you know, they, they get knocked down, they get up, but maybe they get knocked, but when they get back up, they're not as strong as they were the last time. So they, I've got to tell you, when I was a young salesperson, I got a call reluctance hit me square in the face. I, you know, as I said, my dad handed me a catalog and said, you know, did the drive by introductions and there you go. And I went to the sales training, which was product training, but had no sales training. And I had just got out of the Marine Corps where I was yes, sir, no, sir. So you know, you think about that and mm -hmm. then think about having to be proactive and go call on somebody who at that time, these were orthopedic surgeons and they were much older than I was at the time. So I'm like, I was, you know, really uh, get built up all these things in my mind. I don't have as much knowledge as they do. I don't, you know, I don't have the sales experience like the guys that are out there making all and the women that are out there making all the money. So I had all those built up in my head. So I drove two or three hours to a place and sat there in front of an office and never went in. It's no wonder I was ever successful. How, how did I ever get to win five president's clubs with a company? Wow. Because I had to get beyond that. And the, re, the way that somebody gets beyond that is whether it's re related to that particular situation or not. And this is a whole section in the, in the book, but just here's a, just a kind of a pearl, if you will. What, what I've done is I look back on something that I've done that was very difficult. And I said, okay, if I can get through that, then you know what? This isn't that bad. I mean, um, honestly, I got through Paris Island. I got through Paris Island <laughs> in, 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 the, in the heat of the summer with sand fleas all over me, you know, so, uh, you know, and crawling through foxholes and all that baloney. But, mm -hmm. you know, so I figured if I could get through that, I can get through most anything. And that, so that's how I fight personally, car reluctance. And um, the other thing that that um, just real quickly on car reluctance is that you really have to have the alignment of your of your belief in yourself and your product together. They've got to be in alignment because if they are, 
you can get yourself over that hump. If they're not, you're going to find every reason in the book not to do it. Mm. I know that's long. That's a long answer. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, and, and we, uh, you've got a more eloquent way of saying it than I do, but I mean, we, we build up these boogeymen in our minds, right? That, that are our own obstacle that we're creating to success. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, just curious about how you work with folks. So obviously people pick up the book, they're interested in working with you, but, um, when they do that, how does that, how does that happen? Talk about the kind of engagements that you have and how that works. Well, I like to work with people in, in several different capacities. I enjoy large groups because you get, especially when you can get feedback. I also enjoy working one-on-one with folks. Um, I've worked one-on-one with, with sales folks in the past. In fact, it's, it's interesting. I worked with a young salesperson uh, a few years ago, and we actually um, – had a, had a call with a particular uh, customer and came out in the end. I was, wasn't even thinking about this. And this is before the book even materialized. And he said, how did you do that? Just as we were walking to the car, I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, it just seems so easy that the conversation just flowed. How did you do that? And, and, and I say it in the book and there's a section on it. I said to him, you can find common ground with anybody. If you just listen to them for a few minutes mm. and you'd be surprised how much in common that you do have. And I, I, I believe that to be true. And so I love working with people to see the light bulb go on like that one-on-one. Um, but I also, you know, we're in the world of Zoom today. So I've had, um, you know, I had a call um, with, uh, and I went over the personality assessment with 30 people from around the country last week. And uh, amazing the amount of feedback, uh, you know, people reached out to me on LinkedIn and and, and email following that. Um I, you know, some of this stuff I take for granted, quite honestly, because, you know, I, I've lived it and breathed it, but people hear the personality assessment and using it in a sales call again, they go, wow, that makes a lot of sense. And so I like working with groups, Sean. I like working with people individually. Um, you can do the entire four pillars in like a day and a half if you wanted to. Mm. And then with follow-up calls and meetings after that, mm-hmm. which is great. Or you can do, you know, certain sections one-on-one if you'd like to, or I can customize that. It's been, I've been asked by several distributors around the country over the last few weeks if I could customize a program, and certainly I would, I, I would do that for them. It's what they need. you got to meet people where they are and what they need. After you describing your book and meeting people where, where they uh, have need, I'm not surprised you're telling me that's the way your engagements work. So uh, that, that, uh, that's awesome. Um, one of the things I want to uh, dive into, because you're, it sounds like the, your work is not just about sales per se. I mean, one of the things that I uh, read in some of your materials was, was that you see the four pillars as covering leadership as well. Explain what you mean by that. Well, to me, leadership is, is, so you've got a term leader, right? And you got the term leadership and leaders, a label. And a lot of people growing up, they want to be the leader, Mm -hmm. you know, leadership is the, the action, the behavior and the action. And I think leadership it, I, I think Steve Jobs said this, but it's bringing out it's it's bringing people to heights that and I'm paraphrasing this that they never thought they could achieve. Mm. And to do that as a leader um, is for one, that's to me as a, as in leadership, that's a great deal of sat- great great amount of satisfaction. And so um, the four pillars in you know most. A lot of people in sales want to go from from sales to sales leadership or sales management, and not every great salesman is a great sales manager or a great sales leader. So I wanted to plant the seed in this book for future reference that you know um, there are there are things that we need to do, um, and and you know we have to be lifelong learners in order to make that transition. And so you know, the sales leadership for me is bringing, bringing out the best that people have to offer. And then you do that, tie it back to the four pillars. you be honest with them and yourself. If they see that, they trust you. They know that you have integrity. If you show genuine interest in them, 
You're not always going to agree, but that's okay. But you have to listen to people. And then if you're the leader, you know, showing good leadership is making a decision and making a decision moving forward, having people respect that because they trust you enough to follow you in the battle. I know I like to, to use the, the Marine phases, but the Marine things, but I, I you know, I, I learned a lot in the Marine Corps. And one of the things I learned in the Marine Corps was that, you know, uh, you, if you've got to make a decision, you know, I've had, you, you just got to trust people, you know, you, and if you've got somebody in leadership, you know, you're looking at, somebody's looking at me and they're looking at me and saying, they're assessing me mm. and they're sizing me up. And if I don't show good leadership, if I don't show the trust, if I don't show, you know, integrity, then they're not going to want to follow me. They might, that's a management thing. They'll do it because they have to, but not because they want to. Sure. That's another long answer, John. And I apologize. No, no, I think that's great. Um, yeah. And I'm not surprised you're an ex Marine guy, cause you do use the metaphors that fit that. So that, <laughs> that so that's great. And thank you for your service, by the way. Um, not to correct anybody, but there are no ex Marines. There are just Marines. Ah, okay. I like that. I like that. I th- and actually, I think I've heard that before. So I need to be, I, I do stand corrected on that. Now, well, no, I didn't need it. And, and one, one other thing that I guess I like to say about Marines is good Marines never die. Uh huh. They just, they just go to hell to regroup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, uh, that that's awesome. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't ask the question. Unfortunately, I have to keep asking, uh, all my guests is COVID-19 and the current environment and, uh, sales is, is your expertise. How has the sales process, what you recommend to folks changed here in these last few months versus what it was pre pandemic? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I've given that some thought of, especially over the last couple of weeks, because that's how I've had to work. And, you know, you've had to work and many, many people have had to work. And I think one of the things we have to pay attention to is that, you know, we can't hide behind zoom for relationships. Um, you can see people, you know, uh, people still need to present themselves in, in the way that professionally in the way that they want to be seen and that they need to be seen by their customers and clients and colleagues, you know? Um, And so we've got to be careful to hold ourselves to continue to hold ourselves to a high standard that way. We just can't say, okay, well, it's zoom meeting and I'm going to pop in and, you know, just do this. And I know that happened to begin with, but I'm finding more people are getting more serious about it. I mean, look, you can go into any store right now and you can't find a microphone uh, for a zoom meeting because people have smartened up, you know, they're, sure. they're in high demand, um, stock in those must be pretty high right now. So, um, don't forget about the relationships, even though you got to do it through phone, you know, and I guess, you know, some people will say maybe I'm old school because, you know, it's sometimes there's so much loss in a text message or an email. There's no inflection in your voice or anything else. And so I think we, we get dependent on that. And now all of a sudden we're having Zoom meetings and we're seeing people. So stay on top of that. Uh, present yourself well. Try to be well spoken. Look at people. Make sure that they see that you're, you know, that genuine interest thing. That you, you know, you're not fiddling around doing other things while you're on a Zoom call because they know that you're not interested, just as if they were there in the room with you. Mm-hmm. So things are changing that way, and I think we. I'll just say that we need to be aware of it. Um, and, and not lose sight of the fact that relationships are still important. We just have to get there a little bit differently. Folks, we're here with Jerry Savage, and Jerry is the president of Four Pillars Consulting Group. And uh, again, another shout-out to his book. He's also the author of a book called The Four Pillars of Sales, uh, which will um, uh, put a, a – link to link to that book in, in the show notes. So, uh, uh, if you're interested in that, um, so Jerry, this has been great. Uh, you know, I know that there are folks out there that would love to know more and loved how to connect with you. And, and, uh, that's the most important question is how they, how they can, uh, do that. So, uh, if you can help with that, that'd be great. Sure. There's, there's a few different ways. Um, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, Jerry with a G, G E R R Y Savage. Um, there's also the four, uh, not the, but it says Four Pillars Consulting Group. Um, there's a page that you can reach me at on LinkedIn that way. 
Uh, the website is is www.4pillarsconsultinggroup.com. You can also re- reach me at info at fourpillarsconsultinggroup.com. Or you can just give me, pick up the phone and give me a call. I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody, anytime. And that number is 717-514-1523. Jerry Savage, folks. Uh, Jerry, it's been a pleasure having you. John, it's been, a, it's been a pleasure. I've really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, thank you. Folks, if you've got some headaches that involve uh, bookkeeping, maybe you've got a Nike box full of receipts, uh, maybe you need some help in the administrative task in your business you're spending too much time on, and you need to spend time in Jerry's book on sales instead, uh, well, I've got an answer for you that involves picking up the phone and calling SES Cabido, and she's the chief executive angel over at Office Angels. SE has a whole team of angels that work virtually, so this COVID-19 environment is nothing new for them. They uh, fly in, get the job done, and fly out, and uh, they work on an ongoing or as-needed basis. So give her a call at 770-442-9246 or go to officeangels.us for more information, and she'll be glad to help. Uh, Also, just a quick Reminder, we are on all the major podcast apps. North Fulton Business Radio is the search term. We would love it if you would go on your favorite app and find us. And yes, you will find us because we're on all the major apps. Um, But go there, uh, subscribe to our show. Give us a rating, if you would, uh, a nice review, because it helps people find the show. And it's not about us. It's about our guest. Great guests like Jerry that we've had over these past four years, and it helps people find them so they can benefit from their services. So if you could do that, we would greatly appreciate that. And we would also love it if you would connect with us on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. We're at North Fulton BRX. So for my guest, Jerry Savage, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.